Good morning. Welcome or welcome back to our time of worship here at the First Congregational Church of Oshkosh. We say here in this congregation and in churches throughout the United Church of Christ that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, and these days, no matter where you are right now, you are welcome here. Welcome into this community of love and prayer, hope and service. Just a quick reminder, once again, we do have a virtual coffee hour after worship each week. Um, we start a little bit after, after the service. If you are not currently on our email list and so have not received a link to join the coffee hour, please let us know. Send an email to the office at office at fccoshkosh.org. Announcements, uh, just a reminder yet again that uh, we are in the midst of our fall congregational read. The books are many, um, run the gamut from ages, full adults, young adults, younger children, uh, and anybody in between. Among the books in our congregational read are Austin Channing Brown's I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness, the young adult version of Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy, a true story of, of the fight for justice. We also have for the children, Julius Lester's Let's Talk About Race, A is for Activist, and The Other Side. And the other books in the congregational read are listed in the tidings, uh, both in July and August. We worked very hard to get the August tidings out last Wednesday in hopes that it would be in your mailboxes yesterday. It wasn't in ours. Uh, I hope it was in yours, but if it wasn't, it should be there very, very soon. I invite us all to take a deep breath, to take in the peace of God, the peace that passes understanding, the peace that rests in justice, the peace that flows from love, the peace made possible by the power of forgiveness and compassion. Take a deep breath, breathe in that peace, and as you exhale, imagine that peace flowing into you and then out into the world, for the world is in great need of the power of love and the power of hope and the power of God's call to justice. Now let us begin our worship service as we usually do here with the sound of the singing bowl. Doug Board Pyre will now offer our opening song. Everything is beautiful in its own way. Like a starry summer night or a snow-covered winter's day. Everybody's beautiful in their own way. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way. so blind as he who will not see. We must
must not close our minds. We must let our thoughts be free. For every hour that passes by, the world gets a little older. It's time to realize that beauty's in the eyes of the beholder. Starry summer night or snow covered winter's day. Everybody's beautiful in their own way. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way. We shouldn't care about the length of his hair or the color of his skin don't worry about what shows from without but the love that shows from within we're gonna get it all together now and everything's gonna work out fine just take a little time to look on the good side my friend and straighten it out in your mind. Everything is beautiful in its own way. Like a starry summer night or snow-covered winter's day. Everybody's beautiful. summer night or snow-covered winter's day. Everybody's beautiful in their own way. Under God's heaven, the world's gonna find a way. Thank you, Doug. Now I invite you to join me as we light our prayer, our peace candle, and with prayers for peace in our hearts and peace and healing in this world, we light this candle. And I invite you to gather around in one fashion or another for a children's time with tiger and dragon and just a quick uh, note that if you haven't already gotten something uh, something to drink and some bread or cracker for communion please do take uh, uh, an opportunity to do that so you are prepared for communion but first let's hear from tiger and dragon How are you? I'm tired and frustrated. Tired and frustrated? Well, I just got back from delivering all of our cookies, and um, I had a nice time uh, flying around town and making all of the deliveries and bringing everybody the cookies we got going on, and uh, all our deliveries are done. Good. So we should now deliver the last stuff we got for today. Are you ready yet? Have we got all those cookies ready yet? I have six more dozen I need to make. All right. Sounds good. You know. But you know what would make it easier? Uh-huh. If I had the KitchenAid Spatula 2000. The, the what name? The KitchenAid Spatula 2000. Oh. It, you, you, I'm sorry. When I came in, you said something about being tired and frustrated. Is that why you're tired and frustrated of the KitchenAid Spatula 2000? 
I don't have one. Uh -huh. I have the KitchenAid 1000 and the KitchenAid 500 uh -huh. spatulas, but right now I am using this old one that belonged to Kelly's grandma uh -huh. because neither of those spatulas work well and, and they don't make me happy. So I think I would enjoy baking cookies again if I had the KitchenAid spatula 2000. But, yeah, we, um, okay, but uh, you know, when when um, before we started the business, you never had a KitchenAid spatula. We always we always just used um, Kelly's grandma's little antique clipper here, which I I always thought was a nice little clipper. But but I'm not having fun anymore. Well, I, I feel like all I do is bake cookies, bake cookies, bake cookies. And if I had a KitchenAid 2000, it would be easier and I would be happy baking cookies again. You're not happy baking cookies. What? Is that what you're telling me? I am not happy baking cookies. Mm. Raven, Kat, are you hearing this? Tiger says she's unhappy baking. You used to always be happy baking cookies. The cat, the cat I can't believe it. Cookies. I can't believe it. That's why we started the business was because you like making cookies. It was, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I loved baking cookies for my but, son, right. who I loved, and then they loved it, and oh, I think that is why my cookies don't taste like they used to taste any, before. I think they are missing love. Mm. I don't love it anymore. But if I had a KitchenAid 2000 spatula, I think I would love it again. Really? Can we buy a KitchenAid spatula 2000? What, please, how, does, please? How, does, how, does, how does a spatula make the difference about love? I mean, I mean, I mean, like I say, we, we made we made all of our cookies before we started the business with the the, the, the little old clipper. And we were we were happy and we had fun and you love baking cookies. But I don't love it anymore. I always just bake cookies and and I resent the people that I used to oh. love and and I don't ever see you anymore. Oh. And I'm just always in the kitchen and and baking cookies. Tiger. Yes, Dragon. You know what I think? What? I think the problem ain't the spatula. No? Hmm. Might be the cat, but I don't think it's the spatula. I think it's the fact that we don't bake the cookies anymore. You bake the cookies, and I do all the flying around making the delivery. You're always here in the kitchen. Well, this is the living room, but you're always over there in the kitchen, and um, you're always working on baking cookies. And I'm always all flying around telling them you and I are never together anymore. And really, yeah. wasn't that what we were actually like it about was. baking cookies? It was. And 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 you know, I I think I think that's where the love came from. Oh. I'm going to go out on the limb and say that I don't think love comes from a spatula or either two thousand snake. No. No. Does I it think, come from being? Together? I think so. I think I think it comes from something like quality time with you and with me making cookies and the conversations we have in the kitchen and the chewing on the raw cookie dough sometime and the jokes we make and the fun we would have together. I bet you that I bet you that I bet you. But what if could I stop baking cookies to stop? Well of course. We don't, yeah, we don't. We, we, think we, don't, we only started the business because you like baking cookies I and did. I like flying around making deliveries. And um, we just like, hey, let's make a couple extra bucks and um, maybe buy a bird bath or uh, um, a spatula. Right. Two thousand. Well, then it was a spatula five hundred. It was, and, and, and then it was a spatula. I think you're right, Dragon. All right. Then. All right, then. So we can just stop. We can just stop baking cookies for for a business. We can just make them when we want to. Yeah. I think you're right. Okay. Well, let us make this last batch that we promised to people. And then, you know what we can do? What? In addition, you 
we can bake the batch together, and um, you can come with me on the delivery. That would be so much fun. Right, like we used to do in the old days before this was a business. Smile and we could see people smile and they ate the cookies. And yeah. in addition to the cookies, yeah. you could give them a recipe. <gasps> That's right, they can discover the joy I mean, be of making a cookie on my own. Let's do that. With family and friends. Thank you, Dragon. Thank you, Tiger. Okay. 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 All right. Let's get back to it. Come on, cat. All right. Get in on this with us. Here we go. Thank you, Dragon and Tiger. Now let us continue to gather round and listen to the words of scripture as read to us by Bill Erbrock. The first lesson is from the prophetic book of Isaiah, chapter 55. It's an invitation to the abundant life. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the Holy Gospel of St. Matthew in the 14th chapter. When Jesus had heard that Herod had beheaded John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. So when he went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy some food for themselves. Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled and they took up what was left over of broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Thanks be to God. Through the prophet Isaiah or someone writing in his lineage, we hear these words from the Holy One. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. It is hard to read this scripture without remembering a certain meal I had oh, over 30 years ago.
years ago. Shay and I had traveled to Salinas, California. I had to do some research in the county courthouse that day, and so we made a day trip of it. It was late, so we needed dinner before we headed back to Oakland. And I don't remember the name of the restaurant, nor do I remember the meal, the dinner itself, but then came the dessert. Amusingly enough, it was from Nancy's Cheesecake Factory. Not the Cheesecake Factory, Nancy's Cheesecake Factory. And I ordered one of the cheesecake pieces, as did Shay. I popped the first bite into my mouth, and I swear to you, it was a revelation. Like all the goodness of food poured into a single forkful. But somehow, I don't think that's quite what the Holy One has in mind in these words that come to us from the book of Isaiah. But I invite you to hold that thought. Is it or is it not something to which the Holy One points? But these words from the book of Isaiah come from a very difficult time in the life of the nation, the people of Israel. It is at the end of what's called the Book of Consolation, or Second Isaiah. It addresses the exiles from Judah, the exiles who are in Babylon. They have been cut off from their homes. They have been cut off from those who are not exiled with them. And they are caught in a political situation beyond their control. And I ask you, does that remind you a little bit of your own life right now? We are not entirely in exile, but we are cut off from many of our usual routines and cut off from many of the things that perhaps usually sustain us. And it can seem as though we are caught in political situations over which we have little control. And this vision, this call, these words come to the exiles and they come to us. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Through the prophet, God brings consolation to the people, and it is a very tangible kind of consolation. It is about abundance, wine and milk and bread, rich food, a reminder that God fed the exiles, the people of ancient Israel as they wandered through the wilderness and in the wilderness of their exile in Babylon, the Holy One reaches out to them and says, come to me, eat what is good, delight yourselves in rich food. Do not give up. Do not think that I, your creator, have forgotten you. There is this challenge here. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? For it seems that those exiles in Babylon may have, over time, started to accumulate goodies, started to accumulate the trappings of a successful material life. And so the Holy One comes 
and says, don't you see those things that you grasp at, those things that you labor for to get ahead, those things that you reach for to make you feel better in the moment, those are not rich food, the kind of rich food that I, the Holy One, offer. God comes to us and says to those who have no money, I, the Lord, am seeking to care for you. Do not doubt my love for you. I am at work feed you body and soul. And the Holy One comes to those of us who have the money, who have the ability to labor and work for those things that ultimately do not satisfy. The Holy One says, what are you doing? Have you forgotten me? Have, for you, have you forgotten the bread that feeds your soul? Because it is bread that draws you closer to me, your God. And it is bread that expands your heart to care for those with no money. To the exiles in Babylon, this word comes and seems to upend the current economic system. The riches of God are available whether you have money or not. And the Holy One specifically speaks to those who have not. But note, note, that this promise comes in difficult times. And this promise comes as a word of consolation, a word of hope, but also as a call yet again to those people and then to all people who seek the ways of God. That, I, that the Lord does these things, the Holy One does these things for all the people. This brief passage from Isaiah promises that by following the ways of God, the ways of Yahweh, to care for the outsider, the stranger, to care for the widow, the orphan, the poor. When you do that, when we might do that, you become a beacon to all the nations, a beacon that says there is a different way of being that is possible. It does not have to be dog eat dog. It does not have to be that certain people stay on the bottom, unable to get enough food on the table or shelter over their heads. It does not have to be that way. And the call to those of us who are comfortable is to watch out, to look, to look with clear eyes. What is it that we are laboring for? What is it that we spend our money on? Does it truly satisfy? Or does it just leave that hole within us? that only God can fill? Does it leave us empty? I wonder if there are times in your life when you've looked back, perhaps you've attained something, an accomplishment, 
bought a house, bought something, achieved something, that you were sure would give you a sense of deep satisfaction and would change your life. And did there come a time when you realized that although it was not necessarily a bad thing, it might have even been a good thing, but it just didn't feed that hunger deep in your soul. That hunger that can only be met when we are receiving the Holy Spirit and following the ways of God. And next to those moments when you thought, this is what life will be all about. This is my crowning achievement. And it turned out not to make all the difference in the world. Think about other moments. Perhaps it was an astonishing sunrise or sunset. The first time you held your child, or your grandchild. A moment of reconciliation between you and someone with whom the relationship had become so broken. Or simply watching two of God's children play. Perhaps those are the moments that truly satisfy, that give us the bread of heaven, the bread of reconciliation, the bread of possibility, the bread of beauty. The reading from Matthew sets the table quite literally for our communion service. And it is a moment in which we wonder if those disciples were just wanting those crowds to get away from them. Just get them, Jesus, send them away so that we might have a chance to eat at least a little bit. Or are the disciples instead concerned about them? The disciples know there's not enough food for all these people. So they say to Jesus, these people have followed you for a long time. It's been a long day. They need nourishment. So tell them to go get it. But Jesus says, no. No. Jesus says to the disciples, Jesus says to us, you give them something to eat. You give them bread that will satisfy. And the disciples say, we ain't got it. We can't. What we have is so little in the face of such enormous need. We can't do this, Jesus. We can't do this, O oh God. The crowds are hungry, the world is hurting, and what little it seems we have to feed and to bring healing. Jesus says to those disciples and to us, bring me what you have. Don't keep telling me about how little it is. Bring what you have. And in the hands of God's beloved Jesus, the anointed one, the guide, guardian, teacher, healer, 
sal salvation, Savior. That little bit that the disciples had becomes an abundance beyond imagination. This is a miracle story. There's so many different ways to understand miracle stories in the Bible. And whether we read them literally or symbolically, this is an important story. It's the only miracle story that shows up in all four Gospels. However we read it, the invitation is to us, too, to bring what we have, what little we seem to have in the face of the crowd's needs, the world's needs, even our own family's needs. Are we willing to bring what we have and offer it and see, just see what God can do with it? In the hands of the Holy One, our small seeming offerings can bring good news to the poor, release to the captive, love to the forgotten, justice for the despised, comfort and guidance for any and all, including ourselves, in our grief, our uncertainty, our fear, and our deepest need for nourishment. We are invited to offer bring what we have. And in the hands of grace, what happens is beyond our control and can be beyond our imagination. And I asked you when I began to hold on to that question was Nancy's cheesecake for Nancy, that kind of rich food that God offers. And on one level, no, no. That's not what we hear in this reading from Isaiah. It is not the bread of heaven. But it is something, and perhaps it's this, that delight in the moment, that awe I felt for what a very small cheesecake store could do. It was a glimpse. It wasn't the whole shebang, but it was a glimpse of what can happen when in love, creativity, hope, and a desire to feed other people, we bring the most mundane seeming ingredients together and give it our all. What can emerge is indeed a revelation from God. My beloved people, we will soon share a very, very simple meal in which we are invited to encounter the fullness of life, the abundance of God's provision in the tiniest seeming thing. And so whether you are feeling yourself tiny, medium size, or even grand, know that what 
you can bring, God can turn into a feast. Let us find a way to share what we have so that this troubled nation and this troubled world will know the richness of the feast of love. In the name of all that is holy, amen. We move now into a time of more focused prayer. I invite you to take another deep breath. Close your eyes if that feels comfortable. Breathe deeply and seek to listen for the whispers of the Spirit in your own heart and the depth of your own need in your soul. And let us be together now in a time of silence and prayer. Gracious God, holy mystery, like those exiles long, long ago, it can seem that we too have reason to doubt your promises. Your promises of shalom, your promises of liberation for the captive, abundant life for the oppressed, food for the hungry, drink for the thirsty, clothing and shelter for those who lack them. Like those exiles, we have reason to doubt. Perhaps if we look at our own lives and certainly if we look at the lives in this nation and this world, but as you came through the prophet, you come still through Jesus and the prophets of our time, saying there is another way. It is the way of justice, the way of generosity, the way of grace and love. And you invite us to look to the life of Jesus see what it looks like. It is a life of simplicity, of courage, of community, of compassion. And in and through it all, trust in you. Holy One, feed us with your bread. Nourish our faith in you so that we might join you in your work of transforming this world, so that we might join Jesus as he walks the pathway of healing and hope. We lift our voices in the prayer he taught his disciples so long ago, as we say, our Creator, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
with whatever we have. Our time, our dreams, our resources, our gifts, our talents, our loves. We are called to be generous. And so as we listen to the doxology and perhaps join in, let us rededicate ourselves to the generosity of life and spirit to which God calls us. We are invited to the table of unending abundance in these simple elements, the fruit of the vine and the bread from the kitchens. We are invited to meet the Holy One, to join Jesus in a feast of community and blessing. The story has been handed down from generation to generation to generation around the world that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples and told them he had longed to share this meal with them. And as he did with the crowds in this morning's reading, Jesus took bread and he looked up to heaven and he blessed it and he broke it and that fateful night he said to his disciples take eat this is my body broken open and shared with you and with so many likewise after the meal Jesus took a cup and said to his disciples then and now. Drink of this, all of you. This is the cup of a new covenant sealed in my life's blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Holy God, we remember your beloved Jesus, his death among the wretched, his resurrection for us all, your wisdom, our guide. Your justice, our strength. Your grace, our path to rebirth. Enliven this bread, awaken this body, pour us out for each other. Transfigure our minds, ignite your church. Nourish the life of the earth. Make us, while many, united. Make us, though broken, whole. Make us, despite death, alive. In the name of Jesus, amen. The feast has been prepared, whether we come feeling rich or poor. We are welcome to share in this meal. And as we do the, that, allow this meal to nourish you, body and soul, as we listen to Jen Stelflug, invite us to come and find the quiet center.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you feed us in ways we are aware of and ways that remain a mystery. We thank you for meeting us in this meal to enliven us, to nourish us, to bless us, so that we might go into your world to be a blessing. In your name we pray, amen. Now, as we begin to move toward the end of our service, let us allow the song, Let There Be Peace on Earth, guide us and inspire us. Thanks to Ed Schneider for bringing us this music. And now, beloved people of God, wherever you are, may the Holy One nourish you, quench your thirst, and inspire you to be the blessing, the particular blessing, the unique gift to the world God created you to be. Amen. Beloved ones, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>